Hi everyone, I am CS Ruby Punshi, Indirect Tax Expert at ClearTax, and today we all gathered here to understand about the recent GSTN changes. So, especially we all understand that there are a lot of changes which has been done on the government portal recently, which is by I think yesterday itself. So, we're going to uh, discuss about all of that changes and how this is actually going to impact on the business. But before we even start our today's session, I just want to check if you all are able to hear me or not. So if you are able to hear me, just say hi on the chat box. Great. So it seems like everyone is able to hear me. So with this, we'll just start our today's session, which is on understanding about the recent changes which happened on the government portal. So we'll talk about the changes. We'll also understand about like what is the impact of these changes on the business. We'll also talk about like uh, especially like why why these changes are even there, like why they have made such changes. And accordingly, we'll also see on the government portal live that what exact was a change. So with this, let's start our today's session. So here, if we just talk about the first and the foremost change, it's on the GSTN portal, which is about the 3B, right? So there is one major change on GSTR 3B form itself. And you would be wondering like, okay, if we look into GSTR 3B form, which you're seeing right now on the screen, this is something which was already live. So this change was live already in the month of August. So in August 2022, the government had made this change where if you look into especially the table number 4B1, right? So if you just see 4B1, they added something called NCEF, section 17, subsection 5 of CGST Act. They have made some changes in table number 4D. So they added something in 4D1 and 4D2. That was a change. But now the part was that how exactly this change is going to impact the business. That was a major thing. So there was some tax change, but that tax change has a very huge implication on any business. Now let's talk about what the government has changed it and how exactly that is going to impact us. The first and the foremost change is that when we look into table number four, so before we even go into the change, let me first explain what exactly is this table number four of GSTR 3B. So if we look into table number four of GSTR 3B, we do have table number 4A, we have table 4B, we have table 4C, and we have table 4D, right? 4A, 4B, 4C, 4D, these are the four tables mainly in table number four of GSTR 3B. If we focus on 4A, it mainly focuses on the ITC part, which is available where we claim some ITC, right? So 4A focus on the claiming of ITC. 4B is a more of a reversal section where we have to reverse certain ITC. When we look into 4C, it's nothing but just a net figure. So 4A minus 4B is equal to your 4C. Then we do have 4D and 4D is just a kind of a representation thing. It's just for only for the purpose of telling that this is some information I have to tell you. This does not form part of any calculation, right? So 4D is something where we tell some information to the government with an additional information we have to report to the government. Now, today, if we look into the table 4A, 4A have certain bifurcation. They have certain additional information like import of goods, import of services, then inward supply liable to reverse charge. Then you have inward supplies from ISD and then there's all other ITC. If I have certain ITC, which is related to my import of goods, I have to report in 4A1. If I have certain services like import of services where I'm paying the taxes under the reverse charge and accordingly I'm claiming the ITC on top of that, I always show in 4B, uh, 4A2. Similarly, other than import of services, if there are other purchases I have made, it could be registered or unregistered purchases where I was liable to pay the taxes under the reverse charge and now I have to claim the ITC on the same, I always show that in 4A3. Similarly, if I have certain input tax credit from an ISD, which is my mainly head office, I show that information in my 4A4. And then if I have certain purchases from the registered vendors against which I have to claim ITC and I have met all my condition, I always show that in my 4A5. Right. Similarly, if I have to do certain reversals, like it could be reversals because of rule number 42, where I have both the exempt and the taxable supply, or it could be the reversal of my capital goods input, where I have to do the reversal as per rule number 43. Again, when I have like both the exempt and taxable supply, 
it could be the reversal where i can't claim it itc as per section 17 subsection 5 which is more of a block credit right uh, example could be i have used that goods or the services for my personal thing it could be purchase of motor vehicle where i'm not into the business where i can actually i'm not into the transportation of goods or transportation of service where i have to show the information in table number 4b1 right so 4b1 is mainly focused on the permanent reversal where I am not going to claim the ITC again, I always show the reversal in table number 4B1. If there is some temporary reversal, I always show that information in 4B2. So this was certain changes which was done by the government. Where what they were saying that, see, whatever the value you are going to show in 4A5, it should exactly match with the value which is going to come in your GST 2B for that return period. Now, once you have taken the value from your GST 2B that will be populated in your 4A5, then out of that, because when we look into 2B, right, in 2B, we do have eligible ITC as well as ineligible ITC. Now, you would be saying, what is eligible and ineligible ITC over here? So, when now we focus on 2B, we do have ITC which is available, then there is ITC which is not available. When we look into ITC which is not available, the cases where the government says it is ITC not available is whenever there is any intrastate transaction, right, which means the supplier state and the place of supply which has been mentioned in that particular invoice is same, but the recipient state which is customer state is different. In that particular case, the government says you cannot claim ITC on this. A very normal example could be in case of immobile property, a normal thing. Let's say I am registered in the state of Karnataka. When I am registered in the state of Karnataka, let's say I visited Delhi. I stayed in a hotel. That hotelier actually asked me, okay, if you can give me your GSTN number, I shared my Karnataka GSTN with that hotelier. That hotelier was registered in the state of Delhi, right? Now this hotelier mentioned the place of supply also as Delhi. Why? Because as per the place of supply provisions, we all know that in case of an immobile property, the place of supply is the state in which this immobile property is situated or located, right? So in this particular case, that supplier mentioned place of supply as Delhi. Now this person would have charged CGST and SGST. And obviously when that person has charged Delhi GST, which is SGST there, I, who is located in the state of Karnataka, can never claim ITC. So this is one category where the government considered this ITC as ITC not available. So I cannot claim ITC on that. Now there is second example. When, when we look into GSTR 2B, there is ITC not available. What is that ITC not available as per GSTR 2B? That is a case where it is a time bar thing. When I'm saying it's a time bar thing, a very simple example. There was a supplier and that person has not filed his, let's say, GSTR 1 for the month of March. We all understand the maximum time limit when I can claim the credit in respect of any financial year is always till my next year, 30th November, which means till my October written filing, I can claim that ITC. Now, this supplier was non-compliant. He never files his return. There was a notice which has been issued to that person for the even cancellation and all. But then let's say there was a revocation happened. Now, in such case, this finally the supplier has filed his March return in the month of November. Now, when the supplier files his GSTR 1 for the month of March in the month of November, in that particular case, you will see that this particular purchases which you had made from the supplier will be reflected in your GSTR 2 before the month of November. But now you're not in the position to claim ITC because the maximum time when you could have claimed that ITC in respect of this invoice would be till your 30th November. But now the 2B for the month of November will anyhow be generated only on 14th of December. So you will not be allowed to claim the ITC again this particular invoice. So this is something which is known as time bar. And the government can itself can see from the filing date and the date of invoice that they are, can you claim ITC or not? So in 2B itself, they are able to identify that this is some ITC which you can't claim it, right? So when you look into your GSTR 2B, this is also categorized under the category of ITC not available, right? So here, the change which they have done in the month of August, they said this information, which is ITC not available, you directly show in table number 4D2. 
so if we look into your gst at 2b 2b has itc available 2b has itc not available the itc not available part you directly show in 4d2 don't show in anywhere in 4a or 4b like okay there was no problem now you would be wondering what is the change on the government portal right because ultimately our focus is on the change what government have done yesterday so we have to focus on that part before that we should actually understand that how exactly we are going to populate the value from 2b in our gst 3b so we understood that there was a part of itc not available which we have shown in 4d2 which is coming in 2b and it is now reflecting in your gst 3b also so there is no change so this part if you look into today also the government is anyhow auto populating in your gst 3b basis 2b now the next important part was okay you're like okay this part is clear now now when we look into the again right when we look into the 2b 2b has invoices that has credit note that also have a debit note right 2b has invoices from the registered person credit note from the registered person debit note from the registered person here this invoices can have something where the reverse charge is there and that particular thing may also have certain cases where reverse charge is not even there right so there you may say that there are certain invoices which you have received from the registered person but you as a recipient was liable to pay the taxes under reverse charge in such particular cases right wherever you see such scenarios in that particular case you first remove that reverse charge we'll take the reverse charge thing also that how government is auto populating that now the documents which has been left over right because for reverse charge you are not dependent on your supplier to claim that itc right but for the other thing where this is not covered under reverse charge and you have invoices you have debit note and you have credit note the government says now the purchases you have made from the registered person for that particular return period i am going to populate in your table number 4a5 so today if you just see that value which is coming in your 2b in respect of the purchases you have made from your registered person in that case that information will go and sit in your table number 4a5 this is all the itc available other than the reverse charge sitting in 4a5 now let's talk about the change if we see before like because uh, before this release right which happened yesterday the credit note value used to come and reflect in table number 4b2 so the invoices and debit note was forming part of table number 4a5 but when we look into the credit note that was forming part of 4b2 but that was causing lot of inconsistency and it was not even fulfilling why the government has made that changes right so the purpose of the government even introducing this table called 4d1 and 2 it was also not getting solved when the credit note values was coming as a part of 4b2 and why the reason what was the reasoning behind that right why it was not even solving that problem so here if you look into it because of the credit note right when you directly try to match the value which is coming in 4a5 with the value which is coming in 2b you cannot do that and when you say okay let me then include the value which is coming in 4b2 still you were not able to match that the value which is coming after 4a5 minus 4b2 you were not able to match that with 2b the again reason was because the reversals it could be other than credit note reversals also there could be one category that you have certain reversals because of credit note but there can also be other reasons that you have to do the reversals under 4b2 and the one best example could be where you have not claimed the itc in the current month and you want to claim in maybe in the next month there also you will do the reversal under 4b2 but now if you want to match this value with your 2b you are not able to do that right so this was a major problem which was coming up and the purpose why the government even had made changes in gst 3b was not getting solved so here now what government says that the value which is going to come in 4a5 will be net of your credit note so ultimately now if you have something right you had made some ten purchases from the registered person that will be auto populated in 4a5 so here again we said that okay there is an itc available there is itc not available the itc not available forms part of your 4d2 directly it is not going to form part of your table number 4a or 4b then when we look into the okay there is an itc available itc available we again remove reverse charge thing and then we said okay now i'm going to put that in 4a5 my question to all of you that whatever the itc which is coming in my gst at 2b as an itc available can i always go ahead and claim the entire itc 
So you can apply on the chat box. So the ITC which is coming in my 4A5 from my 2B, can I always go ahead and claim the entire ITC? You can apply on the chat box. Can I claim or I can't claim? I could see the answer from Raghu says no, we can't. Ashish says no, Prakash says no, Sunny says no, Shuray says no, Power. So Sagar is saying no, and which is the correct answer. The value which is going to populate in 4A5 now, even if it's a net figure, I cannot claim the entire amount, right? So out of that, and why I can't claim it? There could be a few examples that there was an ITC which is coming in my 2B, but I can't claim because this is covered under 17.5, right? Since it is covered under the 17.5, I can't claim ITC. Example could be there's a rent or gap services, there's a purchase of motor vehicle, there is some personal expenses which I have incurred, right? So I cannot claim ITC because it is listed in our 17.5. So whenever it is listed in 75, now government says, wait, if it is coming in 4A5, you cannot directly remove that value from table number 4A5 itself. It will be populated there. You tell me that out of this, let's say if there is 1 lakh rupees and out of 1 lakh rupees, you know, 20,000 was an amount where you can't claim ITC because it is covered under 17.5. From that, you put that value in 4B1. So that ultimately that will have an impact on 4C and you're not claiming an ITC and the value which is going to sit in my electronic credit ledger will be the value which is coming in table number 4C. Right. So here, if we look into it, the government says that your 4A5 will be auto populated from 2B. Out of that, you decide that what is the value, which is the permanent reversal, which you have to do and you can't claim ITC and put that value in table number 4B1. Right? Similarly, there can also be cases that the value which is coming in your GST 2B for the current month, but since you have not received the course of the services, you cannot claim the ITC on top of that. So when you cannot claim the ITC on top of that for the particular month, since you have not received the goods and the services, the government says this is a kind of temporary reversal. You can't claim the ITC in this current month, but maybe you can claim that ITC in the future month, right? So in such case, what you do, the value will be populated in 4A5. It will be reflecting in 4A5. But since it's a kind of a temporary reversal, put that value in table number 4B2. So you have to put that value in table number 4B2, which is a kind of temporary reversal. Now let's see in the next month, finally you have received the goods or the services. So whenever you have received the goods and the services, that value will not come and form part of your 4A5. Because whenever your GSTR 3B gets auto-populated from your GSTR 2B, that value is not going to form part of your 4A5. Now your government says, okay, no problem. You add this value in 4A5 because now you're eligible to claim that ITC. And at the same time, you also add this value in table number 4D1, right? So we have to add this value in table number 4A5 as well as you have to add this value in table number 4D1 so that there is a correct comparison, right? So even when the government tries to compare your GSTR 2B with the GSTR 3B, they're able to do that, right? So now we just talk about why, right? What was the changes which government have come up within the month of August? Now, if you ask me what government have actually changed in the government portal also. So the first and the important change was the way they're auto-populating your GSTR 3B from your GSTR 2B. That was the first and the foremost change which the government have done. Let me also show and present my screen and you let me know if you are able to see my screen or not. So this is one of the important change which government have done. And let me know if you are able to see. So this is the government form, GSTR 3B form. This is an auto-populated 3B form which we get from the government portal. And here, if you just see the logic, right, that what exactly they have changed. So if you just look into table number 4A. In 4A, the government says that this is an auto-populated form 2B, which is net of ITC available, including amendments. So it has the amendment impact also. So if there is certain amendment, it will always have an amendment minus original value, which is invoices plus debit note minus credit note. So in 4A itself, you will see that value, which will be net of credit note. And if in case, let's say there's a more negative value, then it will form part of your liability. Right? So this is like an important change, which was actually required. And now finally, they have made this change. So I think this is a really a good thing, which they have done it. Not only this, right, there was a lot of confusion which usually used to happen is, let's say, if there is something uh, called import of goods, right, I want to even show certain 
uh, thing or maybe there was some mistake so i was not able to put any negative figure under that particular section so if i have claimed wrong itc now i want to correct it i want to put a negative figure i can't do in the respective section if i have to do certain changes i always have to put that value under the itc reversal so now the next important change which they have done is support of the negative values in table 4 itself so that's like a next important change similarly if we talk about rcm right so if it look into the 4a3 4a3 we again understand that this is in respect of the inverse supply which is liable to rcm and you can take the itc but here you may have the purchases from the registered person but you may also have purchases from the unregistered person so obviously in gstr 2b you never get any itc which is in relation to the unregistered purchases right it only have the supplies in relation to the purchase from a registered person so the government do auto populate and if you look into this what they are doing they are saying okay here also earlier if you see the credit note that used to go as a part of 4b2 for reverse charge also but now under the reverse charge itself they are showing the net figure so here if you look into this now there is an inward supplies which is liable to reverse charge then again if there is some credit notes it will be shown here itself so that is the value they are going to populate and if it is itc not available wala part also they are going to auto populate it here itself so now you may be wondering one important part right so one important part which we should actually understand here is that there if we look into table number 4b and especially when we are looking into sorry 4a3 4a3 the question would be always that you are not dependent on your supplier to pay the taxes on this this is something where you have to first discharge your liability under table number 3.1d and then accordingly you can always go ahead and claim the itc so here if you look into it if you, if you talk about pos wala provision again there would be a problem you can't claim itc but you will not see any practical case which will happen here but if there is some time bar thing right so the time bar thing is not applicable for the reverse charge thing right if you have paid liability today you can always claim the itc also here that's the reason if you look into the reverse charge wala part especially right you may see that the itc not available wala part is also reflecting over here so this is something which the government have done so they have also clearly shown the calculation that how exactly they are populating the value in your gstr 3b versus your gstr 2b so this was the another important change which government have done so this is the first and the foremost change i would say and this is really very relevant when it comes to declaring the credit note because there were a lot of confusion which was happening in the market since government used to populate the gstr 3b form from 2b under the itc reversal but this was causing a problem not only in gstr 3b form and when we are doing or comparing this with gstr 2b but this was also causing a problem when we used to file gstr 9 right so whenever we used to file gstr 9 the bigger problems comes was that if we look into gstr 9 form we have table number 6 and when we look into table number 6 of gstr 9 there is table 6a right if we look into table number 6a of gstr 9 this value used to come from table number 4a of gstr 3b right so when we look into the 4a 4a because government whenever used to populate the value of the credit note under the 4b and not 4a so we were also following that and when we were following that then we were only having the invoices and debit note in table number 6a of gstr 9 there we used to show the breakdown that okay 6b may i have purchased from register person and all of that breakdown then when we look into table number 8 of gstr 9 so when you look into 8a 8a value used to get populated from your gstr 2b which was net of credit note so it used to have invoices plus debit note minus credit note that was a value which was coming in your 8a of gstr 9 but when we look into 8b of gstr 9 this value was getting populated from table number 6a and 6h and if we look into the 6a right so this value sorry not 6a 6b and 6h and when we look into the 6b value because here it was only invoices and debit note that was the value which was coming in table number 6 or we'll say which was coming in table number 8b so here, whenever you compare 80 with 8B, you always used to get a difference because of this credit note. Now, when they are actually showing the net figure in table number 4A5 itself, this problem will also be solved when you report this information in your GSTR 9. So this was one of the important things which happened because there was a lot of problem. Though 
we understand we should show the net figure only but since the government when they auto populate the value from 2b to gst 3b the inconsistency between the behavior of the government portal and actually what we should do was creating lot of problem so with this change this problem will be solved now the another important part because when we are saying okay now you can actually show the net figure the cases could be that okay what what if i only have a credit note in this month i don't have invoices and if i only have a credit note then in 4a5 since i'm showing the net figure i should be allowed to put a negative figure right so that is like a another thing which we should do and for that again what government have done so now if we just look into that so on the government portal itself uh, let me just open the government portal So whether you are able to see my screen now. So here, if we just look into table number four, right? So earlier the government was not allowing the negative figure, but now even if you put the negative figure in table number four, whether it's four A one two three four five, you can always put on punch in the negative figure here. So that is allowed. Similarly, when we look into four D two here also, you can always put a negative figure. So they will allow. But when we look into four B one and two or four D one, they don't allow you to put the negative figure. So here you cannot put the negative figure. So this is the change which government have done. So now you are allowed to put a negative figure in table number four A as well as in table number four D two. But this will actually, uh, if you just look into this right, there is one major problem which is still there and which is in respect of four B, uh, especially four B two, where the government is not allowing the negative figure. And what is the problem which you may face when we look into this is that. See, whenever we say today, right, there is always an example where we say that okay, I have an invoice. and when i do have an invoice in such case think of a case that in first month right i received an invoice and when i received the invoice i said okay i don't want to claim itc because i have not received the goods and the services i only have one single invoice and since i was not sure of because maybe it 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 was having some problem i have not received goods and services i declared that value in table number 4a5 and 4b2 so let's say there was an 100 rupees itc involved I kept this value in four A five as hundred and in four B two as an hundred. So net four C, if you just see the value is zero. So there was no problem. I have filed my GST at three B also. Next month, from the same supplier, I received the credit note of hundred rupees. Now, when I received the credit note from this supplier, since I never claimed any ITC on the invoice, I also don't want to reverse any ITC on my credit note. Now, just to have a consistency between what I have shown in my GST at three B table number four A five and the consistency which is coming in my GST at two B, the value which will be populated from your GST at two B in your table number four A five will be a negative figure, right? So you will have minus hundred in four A five. So since you don't want to claim it, you want to do a kind of reversal again. What you will do, you will show that value in table number four B two as minus hundred. So that ultimately, when you see four C, the value should be zero. But today, when you look into this, in such case, you are not allowed to put any negative figure in table number four B one or two. So this is one problem you will still face. So in such scenario, you have to manually remove the value from table number four A five, and you will always see the inconsistency because the government is anyhow going to look into the tax comparison report, and you will see a difference between the tax comparison report which government have made changes, right? so this is one practical problem which may face but again uh, most of the time you will not face that problem because you will have lot of invoices you will have less credit notes so in such case you will not face that problem but if a person only have one credit note right in such case they may face certain kind of problem now the next part because we said okay the first change we said how their government is auto populating the gst 3b from the 2b they have made the changes in the logic and the logic is already there in gst 3b you can even see a proper documentation trail that how exactly they have computed the value in gst 3b from the 2b result that's the first thing then the second part is that in table number 4a and 4d2 they have allowed you to put a negative figure so now you can put a negative figure so whenever the value in 4c is negative obviously that will form part of table 6 as a liability and you have to discharge that liability either in the form of uh, cash or by using your itc 
right so that was a second important change then the third important change is in their comparison report so we know that the government they also show a comparison report and if we look into the comparison report today right so what exactly are the comparison report so the, you have different kinds of comparison report so in that comparison report also we do have a comparison of itc which is 2b versus especially 3b and if i just present my screen like how exactly that comparison report looks like so this is the comparison report which is on the government portal where we show what is the itc claimed in 3b with what is there is auto populated value in 2b now what they are trying to do that they have seen like right? if you can see there is a logic which is applicable from april to july because till july right there was a different 3b format but after july which means from august onwards there was a different logic so they have divided this logic from april to july and then from your august onwards right this is a logic which has been defined so here what they are trying to do that they are saying that you have to so what government will try in 2b you have an isd document so they will obviously add that document so if you just look into it 4a4 is nothing but the value which we are going to claim in your gster 3b basis isd documents then the value from a registered person so 4a5 is nothing but the purchases you have made from a registered person and it will have net of credit note impact then you have to re reduce the value from 4d1 why they want to reduce this value because in 4a5 while you are filing your gster 3b you will add the value which is not there in 2b but you are kind of reclaiming because it was there in 2b of previous month and in that previous month you would have reversed it now you want to reclaim that itc right so i will give you a very simple example think of a case uh, let's say you had made certain purchases and when you have made some purchases uh, let's say in the month of december you had purchased something and you claimed that itc of uh, let's say there was an itc which was involved was 100 rupees right you have not received any goods or the services so you said okay i want to reverse that itc so in 4a5 you will show 100 rupees then when we look into 4b2 you will show 100 rupees so ultimately when we look into 4c the value is zero so nothing went to your electronic credit ledger now in the next month so in december you file you showed value of 4a5 as 100 rupees so where there was no problem it will always match with your 2b also because 2b also had the value of 100 rupees so there was no difference between 3b and the 2b when you went to the next month now finally you have received the goods and the services so when you have received the goods and services and you have also uh, fulfilled all other conditions of section 16 in that case you want to claim itc now when you want to claim that itc when you look into table number 4a5 since this is not form part of your january gstr 2b right in january 2b this value will not be even there it will not come in 4a5 right you will manually punch that value in 4a5 as 100 rupees because you want to claim that itc right so in 4a5 you will show 100 rupees but at the same time you will also show the same value in table number 4d1 as this is an itc which you are claiming you are reclaiming and which was reversed in the previous months right so in 4d1 you will show 100 rupees and ultimately you are going to claim that value in 4a5 now when you try to compare this with the 2b value right so in the month of january when you try to compare this with the government the government 2b auto populated value what government says that the value which is coming in 4a5 in your example it's 100 rupees minus the value which you have shown in 4d1 which was an amount which was related to a reclaiming of itc which is again minus 100 then it becomes zero and then when you try to compare that with your gst 2b there also it was zero so it will always match so it's a kind of an apple to apple comparison which government is trying to do so in this particular case that's the main reason that why they are reducing the value in 4d1 so here the logic over here is that the value of 4a4 plus 4a5 minus 4d1 which is coming from 3b similarly when you look into your gst 2b it will have b2b plus b2b a and obviously whenever we are saying b2b it's a net impact it's the amendment minus original impact then you are minus credit note plus debit note and if there is an amendment then it's impact then similarly you will have isd documents but it will all exclude the rcm supply because here also we are not including 4A3 or 4A2. So here also they have excluded the reverse charge supplies, which means there is a proper apple to apple comparison which they are trying to do. And this value should always match. Now, 
this is actually i would say the right thing of doing also where you can actually compare the value which is coming in 2b with the value which is coming in 3b it should ideally always match and here if there is a difference definitely you are going to receive the notice so you should always look into this so that you, there is a chances you may receive notices now one case i will talk about one practical scenario and this will again i will advise that we should correct it if you are not doing it today if you ask me uh, let me ask you this one simple question if we look into april 2020 especially because we are right now in the fab month right we are in fab 2023 let me ask you today that can i claim an itc which is related to my april 2022 in my gsr 3b for the month of january can i claim itc where the document date was for my april 2022 in my january 2023 return period you can reply on the chat box so i could see uh, prameshwaram says yes pavan says yes sunny says yes payali and so everyone says yes and which is again right answer we can always claim any itc which was related to my april right so now the point was that this all changes happened in the month of august right so i may always have certain itc which was there in my gst to be from my april till my i would say uh, july month where it was forming part of my to be but i have not claimed the itc on that because i have not received the goods or services or i have not met certain condition so i have not claimed the itc on that in that particular case finally i received that purchase invoice i have fulfilled my condition i will claiming i will be claiming that itc and i will put the value in 4a5 then in that case it will again but i will not put in 4d1 the reason why i am not going to put in 4d1 because i have never reversed that amount in the previous months right whenever i filed my gst at 3 before the month of maybe april or may or june july right so in that case what will happen so this is one case where you will see this will not match and it is always advised that if that is a case please do a proper reconciliation from your april till your july return period and even if you have not followed this practice even after this changes right do the entire reconciliation from your april to december period see that what was the itc which was appearing in your gst 2b but you have not claimed in gst 3b for whatever the reason may be put all that value in table number 4a5 for your current return period and also put that value in table number 4b2 right because you have to do the reverse you don't have to claim itc so always put that value in 4a5 and also do a reversal under 4b2 so that in future as and when you are claiming that itc you always show that value in 4a5 and 4d1 so this will never create any mismatch at least in the future month there will only be a mismatch in a particular month and you can always explain that to the assessing officer you can always put all this trail the documentation trail with you and for that part right whenever you are reclaiming that difference will never occur so this is something which we should always do and this was about the change where the government is trying to do the comparison and not only this comparison they also are saying that okay if you want to even reduce the reversal part i will also do a comparison between that that if there is a you want to consider the itc reversal also if you are putting a net carry not value in the reversal section itself then in that case this is a calculation you can follow right so this was the another important change which was in relation to the import part Uh, sorry i would say the itc part which government have done similar changes if you just see right so this is like a especially the input tax credit which government have done and similar change if you look into the reverse charge liability right in the reverse charge liability this is something which it was there earlier also and they have kept the same change so there is no change here this is something they is doing a comparison of the reverse charge liability so this was the important change in gstr 3b form especially so when i talk about the changes the first important change was that they have started allowing the negative figures the negative value in table number 4 when i'm saying table number 4 so it is specially in table number 4a which is for a1 4a2 4a3 4a4 and 4a5 they are allowing you to put the negative value in 4d2 so these are the tables where they are allowing you to put the negative values and whenever obviously the net negative value in 4c if it is coming as a negative value it will also form part of table 6 where it will be part of your liability where you have to pay either by utilizing the itc or by uh, you can say by making the payment in cash right that was the first important change then the second important change over here was how they are auto populating 
you are just a 3b from your 2b right so that's the second important change so they have made change in the auto population logic so earlier the credit node was forming part as a itc reversal so they used to show that as a part of 4b2 but now they're showing it as a net figure similarly when we look into the reverse charge wala part also earlier the credit node against the reverse charge was shown as a part of 4b2 but now they are showing it as a net figure in table number 4a3 itself so this was like a second important change which they have done on the government portal similarly the third important change is in that comparison report so in the comparison report also they have now updated their comparison report between 3b and the 2b so that was like a third important change which we have they have done on the government portal so this were the major changes when we look into the uh, 3b form which they have done and which is actually going to impact us also because we have to make sure that how we are populating the value in 3b and this will actually help them also right while they are raising the notices or issuing the notices this report whatever they are generating on the government portal that will be one reason right whenever they see a huge difference over there they you are definitely going to receive the notices from the portal so you should make sure that there is no such differences between your 2b and your gstr 3b and the logic which they are using is the same which is the value which is coming in table number 4a5 minus the value which is there in 4d1 should always be equal to the value which is going to come in 2b and when i'm i'm saying the value which is coming in 2b it is the itc available part and other than reverse charge so this was about the gstr 3b the similar changes they are going to and by maybe the next month you will even see in your gstr 1 so there will be some changes which government is going to do in gstr 1 also and for that the government they have already issued the notification right so there is already a notification number 26 oblique 20 22 which notification has been issued where the government have to make certain changes in respect of the reporting of a supply the e-commerce supply now if you ask me what exactly is this change because this is also something which government have to do and still it is not live but we assume because the notification is already issued so the government portal the gst and will make the changes maybe by maximum next month because they have to make it since there is a notification which is there now if you ask me what are these changes what government is going to make and how exactly a reporting in gst one will change today if you ask me about an e-commerce and obviously there are certain changes which was made in budget also we'll even talk about that but let's first focus on the this particular notification because this notification is already issued now when we look into the e-commerce operator right today the e-commerce operator we can categorize this into mainly two part an e-commerce operator where they have to deduct or collect the tcs under section 52 right so there is an e-commerce operator who are actually liable to collect the tcs under 52 which a next few example could be like flipkart right so whenever you are supplying through flipkart or you are supplying through amazon in that particular case they collect some tcs then there is the another e-commerce supply uh, e-commerce operator where they have to pay the taxes under reverse charge under section 9 subsection 5 so this is a second category of an e-commerce operator an example could be uh, swiggy or zomato right that could be one an example where they have to Uh, actually pay the entire liability under the reverse charge in respect of all the supplies which is happening through their platform now let us assume that i am an i am a normal e-commerce person uh, i am not an e-commerce person i am an e-commerce supplier right i am an e-commerce supplier i am supplying through flipkart so i am selling something so there was a customer who places an order on the, let's say flipkart this flipkart have actually given that okay this is something you have to deliver it that person has passed on this order to me and i like okay i will now deliver this goods to the final customer now let's say this customer when that person has ordered something on flipkart he has already made the payment the entire payment so let's say there was a 100 rupees thing i purchased there was an 18 rupees ka taxes now when this e-commerce operator what they have to do they have to right actual supplies if we look into this this actual supplies is not of this flipkart the actual supplies is of this supplier right in this example i am a supplier so this actual sale is of surbi and not that flipkart so in this case if we look into the liability part also the output tax liability right that person would have collected the flipkart would have collected 100 plus 18 that 18 rupees is the liability which surbi is liable to pay to the government so in this case today if you ask me obviously this is a sale of surbi government is able to track this transaction 
through this TCS part because Flipkart will be filing the another return call GSTR 8. So when they file their GSTR 8, they will show that this is the supplier and this is the total supplies he has made through my platform. This is total return which he has done through my platform. This is the total TCS I have collected, right? Now Surbi has to show in their GSTR 1 that this is the total supplies I have made and this is the total tax which I am liable to pay to you. So in table number seven, if you just look into this, so if you just look into this table number seven, there's a lot of confusion which was happening. So the government have clearly mentioned, so there's not a bigger change here. This was there earlier also. Exactly how we used to report earlier. They just have clarified that the B2C supplies which we showed today, it will also include the supplies which you have done through an e-commerce operator who was liable to collect or uh, who was liable to collect the TCS. Right. So they are just clarifying it that this B2C supply, which we're showing, it will also include that supplies where this e-commerce operator has collected some TCS, which means all the supplies I have made through a Flipkart or Amazon, where they have collected my TCS, I have to show in the same section. So it is more of a clarification. I won't say it's so much of change. So I have to show it over here. There was no problem. Now the next part was that, okay, I have shown this information. So there is no issue over there. Now, the next important part, what they're saying that if we look into table number 14, right? Table number 14 uh, talks about that here you have to show the detail of supplies which you have made for an e-commerce operator on which e-commerce operators are liable to collect the tax under 52 or they are liable to pay the tax under 95, which is reverse charge, right? Now, there, if you're talking about the liability, your liability will be determined from the same table. Let's say table number seven, it's a B2C. If it's a, a B2B, it will be determined from table number four. But now they're saying at the same time, right? You also declare the same information here also. So if you are Surbi, because you have done some supplies through this e-commerce operator, let's say through Flipkart. So at the same time, you also report this information over here that what was the GSTN of an e-commerce operator? What was the net value of supplies? So if you just see what government is trying to do, they're just trying to see that whatever the e-commerce operator has shown in GSTR 8 is actually matching with what you are going to show in table number 14. So ideally, this two information should match. And if there is a difference, definitely you are going to receive the notice from the department. So this is like an important change which they have done. So this is the way we are going to report in case we are making a supply to an e-commerce operator. Similarly, this was a one case where this e-commerce operator was actually liable to collect the TCS. In the same way, right? In the same way, you will also see that many cases they have to pay the taxes and itself under the reverse. Uh, best example could be restaurant services, right? If we talk about Domino's, Domino's is a supplier, right? And then there is a Swiggy who is an e-commerce operator. There was a customer who orders on Swiggy. Swiggy pass on that order to Domino's, and Domino's deliver these goods to the final customer. Payment and everything was happening through Swiggy. Now the government says that in this case, in case of the restaurant service, instead of Domino's discharging this liability, Swiggy have to discharge this liability on the transaction which happened between this Domino's and the final customer. So in this case, this Domino's is not liable to pay any taxes, right? So the word government is again saying over here that in such cases, right? Domino's also have to report this information somewhere, right? Where exactly they're going to report. So for that, they have introduced this table number 14. So earlier, there was a lot of confusion that where exactly, because ultimately this was a supplies of Domino's only. This is turnover of Domino's, but they don't have to pay the liability, right? So liability will not be discharged by Domino's, but the turnover is of Domino's. So they should report this information somewhere. So earlier there was a circular where they were showing that show under the related and exempted, but now they're saying don't show over there. Rather, I have introduced a new section, which is table number 14B. And wherever you are an e-commerce supplier and where this e-commerce operator was liable to pay the taxes under 9.5, you report this information over here. So here you have to show all the supplies on which this e-commerce operator is liable to pay the taxes under 9.5, right? So this is the change which the government is going to make. And in this way, you have to also make in the way you actually file your GSTR one. Similarly, if you ask me the other part, now we're like, okay, from the e-commerce supplier, we are going to show this information in the GSTR one. Obviously this e-commerce operator also have to show this information somewhere. So if we talk about an e-commerce operator who was liable to collect the TCS, 
they are anyhow filing GSTR rate. So if they're already filing GSTR rate, they should not show any information in GSTR 1. So for that, government says there's no change. They are already filing GSTR rate. I already have that information. You don't have to do anything in your GSTR 1 because anyhow, they're not, they don't even have the functionality where they have to file GSTR 1, right? They will only be filing GSTR 8 over there. But when we talk about the supplier, the e-commerce operator, where they are liable to pay the taxes under 95, they are the regular taxpayer, right? They, are, they don't take our registration as a tax collector. They don't have any separate registration. So since they have a regular taxpayer, they have to discharge the liability. When they have to discharge the liability, they will pay this information or show this information GST1, or sorry, GST3B. So in the same way, the government says that you also should report this information in GST1. So that when I populate, because entire 3B is getting populated from GST1. So when I populate your GST3B, I will be able to populate from your GST1 itself. So in GSTR 1, again, if you just see, they have introduced one more section, which is table number 15. And in 15, this is you, the e-commerce operator, right? The e-commerce operator like Swiggy, Zomato and all, right? On which e-commerce operator is liable to pay the taxes under 9.5, that information has to be shown over here. So you have to give a proper information, like what was the document number. So whenever the supply was, because here the supply can be registered, supply can be unregistered also. I gave an example of Domino's where he's registered, but they can also be a local restaurant, uh, like a, a local person who is not registered, right? Still, they are registered on Swiggy or Zomato. In that case, you don't have to give document level detail. You just have to give a summary. But wherever this e-commerce, uh, I would say e-commerce suppliers are registered, there you have to give a proper document level detail. So this is like a, another change. And in case there's some amendments which has to be happened because you have made uh, mistakes, then you can always file an amendment. So this was a major change, if you ask me, about the GSTR 1. In GSTR 1, this is still not there on the government portal. This is a notification which was issued. And soon you will see these changes will be live on the government portal also. And then you have to make sure that how exactly you are reporting your supplies if you are an e-commerce supplier or you are an e-commerce operator. So, so this was our changes. And uh, mainly in respect of 3B and GSTR 1, which government have come up with. Soon you will see there are other changes also which government may come up with because if you look into the government portal, they have also introduced one new thing which is called as negative liability statement. And when we look into this negative liability statement, it seems it is similar to how exactly we have the concept in our, com uh, com uh, the concept we have for the composition dealer. So we'll see the government may come up with some few more changes. But this is the major changes which government have done. So if you look into it, the major changes which is live is in respect of GSTR 3B and this is a GSTR 1 changes which government will soon come up with. And now uh, if you are looking for some solution, right, because ultimately when we look into how exactly a GSTR 3B looks like, they are more focused on how you can auto populate the entire GSTR 3B after your 2B and the PR reconciliation. So that will be after the recon only you are going to auto populate your GSTR 3B. So for that, the clear tax have already automated that where you can fill your entire GSTR 3B after doing the reconstruction between 2B and the PR, which makes sure that this is in a compliance. This also makes sure that there is no differences. And at the same time, you get a calculation trail. At a document level, you know that what exactly or where exactly this value is flowing in. So you will be able to even track all that transition. So ClearTax has already come up with a solution. And in case you need a demo, you can always request for the demo for the same. Uh, so for, with this, uh, I would like to end the session. But before that, if you have any queries, right, in relation to this, please feel free to ask on the chat box. So I will take all of your queries. I could see there is one query from Anil. And Anil asked, invoice raised two years back, though supply of service can receive and claim ITC. Can we file revised gs one or not? So Anil, so if, if the, see, if the invoice was raised, like, like say two years back, right? So ideally in that particular case, that person should have already shown or they would have already generated the IRN number that time itself. And you would have received that information and not if the IRN is not applicable, at least they would have reported in their GSTR 1. And accordingly, you would have claimed that IT is in your GSTR 2B after the receipt of that services. And if that is not done, it is always better that you raise a credit note nullify and if it is not even reported at all now you create a fresh invoice for the same
I could see there is a one question from Ashish who is asking. Please tell me when a credit note without GST is issued for a purchases made in the previous financial year on returning the product, how should I reverse the ITC claim? It will be reversed under four B two. So Ashish, uh, what I could understand is like, see, if if you uh, would have received some purchases, right? So if if there were some ten defects and all, right, you would have not even claimed that ITC on that. You would have claimed ITC only in respect of the goods which was received. But if you are saying that no, you have uh, like claimed the ITC on the entire amount, then the reversal you should rightly do in uh, in table number four B two, right? So there you can do the reversal. But if it is reversal because of the credit note and it is even reflecting in your GST at two B, then in such case you can always show the net figure under the four A five itself. So if in respect of this reversal, which is in respect of the credit note, you can show under the four A five as a negative figure. Another question is from uh, Chala Kudi, who is saying, "Is there a time limit for issuing the credit note?" Yes, uh, Chala Kudi, there is a time limit for raising the credit note. So you can raise any credit note maximum by 30th November. And whenever I am saying 30th November, right, till the time limit when you actually file your October GST 3B. So that's the time limit when you can actually issue any credit note. So there is a time limit. So the maximum time limit for any previous year, right, the maximum time limit when you can raise a credit note for that supplies which happened for the Particular previous year till your next year, thirtieth of November. So I think I have covered all the queries. And still, in case you have any queries, right, feel free to mail us at GST Support at the rate clear tax dot in. So that's our mail ID. You can also ping me at Surbhi at the rate clear tax dot in. So that's my mail ID. And in case you even need the PPT, so you can always. Uh, ping us at GST support at the uh, rate clear text dot in. So we'll happy to share the PPT as well. Thank you. Thank you very much.